It was a day that would change Afghanistan forever. Batarin Ruzas. Say Atarin Ruzas. December 27th, 1979. As dusk fell over the streets of Kabul. Слышали там все остальное, там что там происходило, то стрельба там. Soviet troops launched an assault on the Afghan government. This is the story of Operation Storm 333, the secret Soviet mission to assassinate the Afghan president and seize control of Kabul. It was the bloody opening act that would set Afghanistan on a course for decades of conflict. The ruins of Tajbek Palace still bear the scars of an infamous assassination. This was the residence of the Afghan president. Forty years have passed, but Fakir Mohammed Fakir has never forgotten what he witnessed here. He had been urgently called to the palace. Inside, everyone was violently ill. The Soviet Union had cooked up a plot to poison the Afghan president. I mean, say, soup was yet dusted. The mu soup, a miyakpaz. Zarandakta, tenaminafar, marbut bakagibibud. Afghan president Hafizul Amin fell unconscious after eating the soup. Fakir was Amin's interior minister. He moved upstairs to the president's bedroom. For the next four hours, the Soviet doctors, unaware of the KGB plot, frantically worked to revive Amin. Amin agreed that to snap that to snap a mim sat sara awiyaki lakada. I awiyaki lakada u bahusham hata min say to smai sham karma kada to smai sham kulisha kub tayarama pasta takto khab aftida. But President Amin was not out of danger. Vitas Lukshis was among the hundreds of Soviet soldiers who had surrounded his palace. Then 20 years old, the Lithuanian-born paratrooper was part of a tank company. The mission to kill President Amin was born out of Moscow's concern about the growing resistance to his brutal rule. In 1978, communists had seized power in Afghanistan in a bloody coup. Amin jailed and ordered the execution of thousands of Afghans. Some in the Kremlin also worried that he had links with the CIA. The Soviets felt that their intervention in 1979 was forced because of what they feared would be the imminent collapse of the Afghan communist government and army. It was not a decision that they took lightly, but they believed that if they did not intervene, they would be faced with a political disaster in Kabul. As dusk fell, Soviet troops also moved in on the Defense Ministry, which today is the Afghan National Museum. The plan here was to kill the army chief, Yakub Khan, and decapitate the military. Dawlad Waziri was at his desk when he suddenly heard the roar of gunfire. <laughs> As Soviet troops fanned through the defense ministry, Waziri raced into Khan's office. The army chief was in a meeting with several Soviet military advisors. Yakub Khan fired. 
Waziri fled into the hallway. He tried to take cover as a Soviet soldier fired at him. Waziri dashed into a guest room. But the Soviets threw hand grenades, and he had to find a way out. Back at the Tajbek presidential palace, Soviet troops also began their assault. Слышали там все остальное, там что там происходило, то стрельба так далее. Некоторые, по-моему, гражданском там спортобежды там. Inside the Tajbek Palace, Soviet forces went floor by floor, engaging in bloody clashes with Afghan troops. President Amin and his family desperately fought for their lives. Amin said, "I have a right crash. Go. Amadan Sarizina, we did not control me. Cut the agar. Cut me. I." Amin died of his wounds. The Soviets were in complete control of Kabul. Over 200 Afghan soldiers were killed in the battle and more than a thousand surrendered. Declassified KGB files showed that more than 100 Soviet troops were killed. The morning after the assault, Vitas Lukšis entered the presidential palace and saw the wreckage of a fierce battle. Большой красивый дворец, везде двери распахнутые, там такой беспорядок, там. Так я говорю, ковры красивые, там очень красивые, там мебель, там столы, там такие вот. Самая эти эти гипсатура, там так называемая, тоже там. Люстры там вот все это красивые очень очень красивые, потому что я почти я до до этого почти ничего ничего такого и не видел. Было там кровь там, но такие трупы уже там по крайней мере я не видел. The element of surprise was key to the Soviet victory. Even during the attack, there was disbelief among Amin and his ministers that Moscow would attack an ally. The next day, the Soviets installed Babra Karmal as the new Afghan president. It was the start of a disastrous, nearly decade-long Soviet occupation. The Soviet army soon got bogged down in a military quagmire against the Mujahideen, the US-backed Islamist rebels. Сейчас вижу все. Конечно, была ошибка. И ошибка, я думаю, не только там Советский Союз совершал эти ошибки. When the Soviets departed in 1989, the war had killed an estimated 2 million Afghans and 15,000 Soviet soldiers. The Soviet invasion of Afghanistan is one of the most momentous events in the history, not only of Afghanistan, but of the world. The Soviet Union, as a totalitarian despotism, could not afford to be defeated. As soon as it was defeated, it began to disintegrate everywhere. 
Daulat Waziri eventually became an officer in the Soviet-backed Afghan army. It took him 13 months to recover from his wounds, but the emotional scars remain. از وحشت بالاتر بود به خاطر از اینکه دو روز من مردم ما ما را در جمع کسانی که مرده بودند در جمع اونا برده بود وقتی که دیدن که ما زنده هستم ما را در عملیات خانه بردند در شب خانه Today the Tajbek Palace the site of President Amin's assassination is slowly being reconstructed Fakir Mohammed Fakir has also toiled to rebuild his own life. He spent more than 10 years in prison waiting to be executed. He was eventually released after the Soviet pullout. But that was followed by a bitter civil war and the rise of the Taliban. Ashland the Jawuzi Rusha که با شش جدید صدوق داد حمله کرد. در تاریخ افغانستان هم با مردم افغانستان هم با مردم دنیا بدترین روز است. سیادترین روز است. بدبخترین روز است که سر مردم افغانستان این بدبختی تا امروز از امروز که شروع شده تا امروز دوام دارد. 40 years after the Soviet invasion, the road to peace has yet to be found.